Hey guys, Holly here and I'm here with Lane and welcome to my WBFF Worlds Contest Prep Series. Welcome to the couch. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> so, week one, fat loss diet. Ooh. Hey, slow down. What, what happened this weekend? You had your I first week of diet. I suppose that's actually part of the video, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So I had powerlifting. Sorry, take the back. We had powerlifting. Yeah. On the weekend. Surprise. Don't leave me hanging. I was like, what are you doing? This is a five. <laughs> it's, it's, I don't know if Americans invented it, but we use it a lot. You do, you do. Saturday, uh, we drove down to Fort Lauderdale for our uh, Florida State Championships for powerlifting. Elaine made a bit of a surprise appearance, I guess. You didn't really tell anybody about it. I've been like, blah, blah, I'm powerlifting, blah, blah. Everyone that wants to listen to me, listen to me. <laughs> yeah, well, I didn't really know if I was going to do it till like, a, like about yeah, three, four weeks out. Yeah, I think out, you were so. a little bit unsure. Yeah, but it was fun. I really enjoyed competing with you. So I did a couple of PRs on the weekend, which is really yeah, nice. You were, well, you were really frustrated with your squats because you missed your second and third squats. Yeah. Uh, not on strength, but on depth, so execution. I thought you got the third one. So did I. I look back at the videos. Right. I've got like pictures from um, one of my clients. She had a friend there taking photos and she sent me some of them. And I was like, I'm definitely parallel. The, well, no, you have to break parallel. <laughs> But the, the, the problem is, is that once you've missed for depth, they yeah, look they at really the extra you extra hard next time. So yeah, so. basically, if you're not familiar with the sport of powerlifting, you get three attempts at each lift of uh, squats, bench press, and deadlift, and they take your highest, and that becomes your total. Yeah. So usually you go conservative for your first lift, just get something on the mark, and that's exactly what I did. I went really conservative with my squat, hit 265, which I could probably squat for five or six. And um, yeah, I came in at 281 for my second attempt, which I would be able to do. I've been hitting doubles for two. Well, you did it twice. You just didn't quite get. Yeah, deep I just wasn't hitting depth. Um, I think w what I was finding really frustrating is that I was getting a bit of a shooting, like a nerve pain in my left glute or upper or lower back, um, and I just felt like I couldn't get my hips into position as mm. I would normally. So. Yeah, I thought I was hitting it, and bow, bow. So I was super annoyed, because that was the lift I was most excited Yeah, you were really angry for. after squats. You were really angry. It took me like 30 minutes to recover and just pull myself back to you. I think a lot of athletes or competitors, like, you know, you have a setback like that, and then all of a sudden it just sets them off. And I saw, we saw a few athletes kind of just out of it. You know, they made a mistake. You can definitely have a, a meet that starts. Yeah. Like, you, you have... You miss a lift and then it starts compounding. Like yeah. you get mind fucked and then you're, <laughs> you're, you're not focused for bench press and then you don't. Or what happens a lot of times is people go, well, I got to make up those pounds I missed. Yeah, and so they like try to ridiculous. go for something that they can't get mm. and then they miss on there and by the time they get the deadlift, they're mind fucked. Uh, Matt Gary actually keeps data on all the powerlifting meets he goes to. I, he's probably like over 10,000 data points now, but mm -hmm. he's found that if you miss your third squat, you are like 70% likely to miss your third deadlift. Really? No, that's a correlation. So maybe people are going too heavy on their well, third that's squat. that's good because I didn't. <laughs> right, so you missed your third squat, but you made your third deadlift. So yeah. huge PR on your deadlift. You had to pull that to, to tie for second, and then you won on, or you were, you got awarded second place on body weight since you were lighter than the other girl. Yes, so yeah, I was a bit annoyed obviously with my squats, but um, kind of took a moment to, get myself back into a good positive mind space. I just kind of left everybody for a bit and I was like, all right, that's done, forget about it, can't do anything now, move on. So yeah, my, my bench press, um, I didn't think that I would have much in that um, compared to what I, that's probably been my weakest of all the lifts. So I did 160. Well, you had a two and a half kilo meat PR, which is good. Yeah, but I and think we all agreed. I, reckon I think you had another two and a half kilos in there, but I thought it was really important for you to go three for three on your bench, which yeah. is why I made that call. Yeah. So I was coaching her on the, on the platform in terms of attempt Lifts, selection. Yeah. Um, I was very uh, chuffed with myself, as you all would say, <laughs> that uh, with our, our deadlift strategy, yeah. you know, uh, we put in a high third attempt. You can change your, de your third deadlift twice in USAPL. So we actually put in for a really high lift, made your competitor take a really high lift. Mm. Um, she actually hit it. Um, but then we were able to back you off a little bit, and then you hit it. Uh, and then tied on body weight, which mm -hmm. 
you know. Yeah. You would have had you would have had another five kilos in that deadlift. Oh, I know. It felt really easy. I lost it there. I'm like, oh my gosh. But, Why? but it no, will it's be not. there. It'll be there for the next meet. For sure. So, so yeah, I pulled three thirty six, uh, which is one fifty two kilos. And a half. One fifty two and a half kilos. Yeah. So it's cool to know that I could pull potentially one fifty seven. Um, yeah, kilos. Yeah. I think I, I think try. I think right around 350 pounds is probably there. Yeah. So, um, but now, now we my switch eyes gears. are on 400. Now I see, like I've seen a few of the girls do 400. I'm like, whew. Yeah. Well, you know who the the baddest mofo in your division is is Kim Walford. Yeah, I know. She does Kim 560. Freak. <laughs> okay, let's just move on. She'd be like your level of. Well, she's a freaking half. She's like track sprinter. And then with super long arms. Yeah. So I she's just, just the all explosive. Mm. So, so, yeah, the powerlifting was really fun. Um, but it was also my first week of dieting for. How did worms. you feel? Did you feel like you had uh, low energy at the meet or did you feel okay? No, not at all. Felt, felt great. I think it was such a short amount of time to be on reduced calories that it didn't really make any difference. Yeah. But I'm, I'm sure for somebody else, it could have had a big effect, you know. Uh, I think we dropped my calories down by, it was almost 800 from what I'd been hitting the, the week prior. So, like for a lot of people, that probably would have had a fairly big impact on their energy. But I don't normally lift with a lot of food in my stomach anyway. So, that's probably one of the yeah. things I have going for me. But it did mess with my weight this week. So um, Yeah, because you did like salt loading and then depletion and whatnot. Yeah, so at so. the beginning of the week, um, we kind of had a chat about it and I didn't really need to lose weight for the meat because I'm right in the center of my weight category. So I can either, I could be up to 72 kilos if I wanted to and still compete in this division or the, the next category down is 63. Uh, and I was sitting at around 68. So we kind of said at the beginning of the week, well, you know, it depends on who your competitors are. Maybe it wouldn't help it wouldn't hurt if you um, try to get a little lighter. So, Monday you did. You did get second on body weight. Yeah. Now, the guy that won, you weren't going to catch her, like no. unless she bombed out. Yeah. So that was as good as you could have done mm -hmm. uh, in your division. I don't know what the 63s were like. Um, I didn't really. They didn't pay call attention. out the the totals. The totals. Right. I have to go back and look. But 63s a lot of times are more competitive than 72s. Uh -huh. So yeah, they're like pocket rockets. So <laughs> Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I basically doubled my normal sodium intake. So my normal sodium is usually around 3,000 milligrams a day. So I was taking in around six and a half, I think 7,000 um, milligrams of salt, sodium. And then, um, so the, what happens then is that that will pull water and draw water in to help balance out that solute load um, so that you maintain it homeostasis. And your kidneys start excreting more sodium and whatnot. Uh, oh, yeah. That results in upregulation of kidney function. Yeah. So then on Thursday, we drop it to half of what my normal sodium intake is, around 1,500. And then Friday, we dropped it down to like under 1,000 milligrams. So the idea behind that is that your kidneys are still kind of upregulated and functioning and trying to flush out, you know, a lot of extra um, water. And it carries over or has a carryover effect. So then by Saturday... Um, I should actually over excrete and I will lose a lot of water. So that didn't quite <laughs> go. Well, you also had sushi the night before. I think we, your sodium was probably we, a little higher. Yeah, we went to sushi on Friday night and I'd done a well, really well. You have a hard time turning day. down tasty food if it's... No, but I didn't, like, normally I would have um, soy sauce with my meal or I would add all the extra, like, sauces and You stuff. were also backed up. At the time. Yeah, we'll talk too, about so. that. Well, let's finish sodium test. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to go all over the bodily functions. First it's urine and next it's, it's uh, poop. So, yeah, we then, yeah, I, I've been dieted about having quite a high sodium intake on Friday. So that really screwed up my weigh-in on Saturday morning, I think. Well, I didn't screw it up. You were 68-something. I was still in the 68s. Um, I actually had intended, usually when you do that, but you, you said, be able to drop a couple of kilos. You did say after the meat you weighed yourself and you are like yeah, 67? at the end of the day, um, I got on the scales with, like all my clothes on and I had eaten a good amount of food um, and I was about uh, 700 grams lighter than when I'd weighed in. I was like, oh, that'd be right <laughs> when, it, when it actually counts. So that was disappointing. But also my weight is messed up this week because my fiber intakes were so uh, all over the place. Um, I don't know what happened earlier in the week. I think just because I was trying to focus on my salt I just forgot about my fiber. 
<laughs> so yeah, you really you can't really let your fiber get low because as soon as that happens yeah, for you, as soon as it drops under like twenty grams, you just it's like you your butt just, just my, no my GI just doesn't it needs constant movement or it just is like oh, oh we can take a sleep now great yay. <laughs> <Okay. So. laughs> I've never spoken to my GI, but maybe it sounds like <laughs> that. It would definitely sound like that. So, yeah, fire was all screwed up. Uh, <laughs> and this week I actually weighed in heavier than I did last week. Um, even though As I an average? or As an average. My weight is back to exactly what it was when I started last week, which, okay. is, which is fine. You also didn't have weights from the weekend mm -hmm. where you were probably, probably lighter. Probably more. Right. Yeah, so when we have, we'll have a look at my data and you'll be able to see that there's a couple of uh, blank days. So I have no idea what I was. And, and one thing, excuse your average. One other thing to add to that is you were tapering last week. So you weren't nearly as active yeah. as you usually are. And you burn a lot. Your swing from not being active to being active and in the gym is a huge amount of calories for you. Because you are so sedentary in terms of like, um, if you don't actually exercise, you don't expend any energy. You like sit perfectly still. <laughs> Whereas like, I'm like, see this leg? This yeah. just happens. I'm not even trying to yeah, do this. Yeah, you fidget a lot. So I, I fidget a lot, but people don't realize that's how they burn or expend a lot of calories through the day. Being wasteful is as energy, is fidgeting <laughs> and small movements. You don't have any of those. You're just like. Uh, I could, <laughs> what's that movie that we saw? And it's the, the guy's like, I've perfected the art of slow motion. And he's like. Oh, <laughs> God, uh, no. Uh, He's Avengers in Infinity War, yeah, where Drax like is... the popcorn and stay away, watching uh, them while they make out. He's like, I perfected the art of being perfectly motionless. My, my movements are so, so slow. slow. You They're can't imperceptible. See me. <laughs> That's a really good movie. Dude, how long have you been standing there? An hour. An hour? Are you serious? I've mastered the ability of standing so incredibly still. That I become invisible to the eye. Watch. You, you're eating a zarg nut. But my movement was so slow that it's imperceptible. Mm -hmm. I'm sure I'm invisible. Hi, Drax. Anyway, um. Yeah, so my activity was way down. So I kind of knew this week was going to be um, a, a high weigh-in. And yeah. firstly, I think a lot of people would make the mistake. First, they would just use their irrational, non-logic brain and go, oh, I need to drop my calories. I did nothing happened. But if you start to logic your way through it and think about all the variables that I did um, change this week or that were changed, um, it makes perfect sense as to why my weight didn't. So... I'm not actually going to be making any adjustments to my calories this week. Um, I'll use exactly the same targets as I did for last week, but this week I'll be back on a normal training schedule. It's still a little, it's still going to be a little low for normal. Because yeah, because you're a recovery week. I'm rec it's like a recovery week. I, ca I cannot begin to tell you how much like pain and soreness you are in a few days after a powerlifting meet. Like I was all good when I woke up on Sunday, and then as the day progressed. And like Monday, and now today's Tuesday. I'm like, oh. yeah, you learned your lesson after your first one when you <laughs> like went in and squatted the day after the meet. You're like, I feel fine. Right. And then you couldn't move later in the week. So, yeah, yeah really like when you're lifting to your max and like you've got all this adrenaline running. So, like, yeah, you. you it's very fatiguing. Sticking. People don't realize it's very fatigue, mentally fatiguing too. So, yeah, this week is a, another kind of deloader and easy training week. So, I won't be back to my full intensiveness when it comes to the training that I'm doing. Like, everything's an RPE 7 this week. So, I've just kind of cruised around the gym in about an hour and I'm like, oh, I'm already done. Great. I'm out of here. <laughs> so, yeah, this will be a more normal week. Well, why don't we go upstairs and have a look at the data? Okay. Okay, uh, not a huge amount to go over today. Um, firstly, let's just take a look at my calorie target, which was on my low days, it was 1491. Real quick, I'm just gonna show you, I also did have one high day scheduled for this week um, on my meat day. So that brings my average weekly calories to 1582. So if we scooch down to the very bottom here, you can see my average was 1573, all things considered. Um, so despite what this over here says, uh, which would tell me that I was over. Um, I'm actually compliant. I'm just a bit lazy with my tables at the moment. I need to actually set up a table that uh, accommodates high days. So 
Um, I'm pretty pleased with that. Um, if we look at my weight this week, I started the week off at 68.9. That was when I was testing at USF. And my weight trended down every day, which is mm -hmm. kind of opposite of what you would think if you look at my, my sodium. So Lane, like, would you want to speak about what should be happening here? Well, yeah, you would expect that as you raised your sodium, your weight would, would be up, mm. but it actually started coming down. Now, we didn't get weights on these days, the Thursday and the Friday, which is mm. probably when you might have been at your lowest. Right. We don't know. You also had your period this week, which you didn't even talk about in the other part of the video. Yeah. And um, Yeah, I got it the day before my meet. It was awesome. I think I cried twice on Friday. Yeah, you did. You uh, literally, really I literally, I just was crying. crying. I was yeah. like, this is really not fun. So, yeah. Mm. Um... So, I mean, that's, we know you gain a kilo when you have your period. So I think that if you nail your targets this week, which you did a really good job last week. I mean, that's pretty consistent for you. You tend to bounce around a lot, which is funny given how, like, you're so attention to detail, but then your macros will be, like, all over the place. <laughs> and then, but, but then you, like, try to reconcile it by, like, rolling them to different days so that it still fits, which is hilarious. But... Um, you did a really good job. Like, that's very consistent for you. Yeah. I expect if you have another week like that, you're going to have some really good progress, and uh, I don't think we need to make any changes. No, I don't think so either. Um, I, if you look at this, and I've prepped the same types of foods as I did last week, um, I probably could, if I wanted to be more accurate this week and do less math, I could take my um, macros up to better reflect my carbs because I was going over and I was under on my fats, but I'm actually just going to leave it um, as it is. So for this week, um, let me just unhighlight that because it's not the right meat. This week, let's bring that up. Cool. So no changes. Um, I've already got my program for this week for training. So I'm back to basics, all bodybuilding style workouts now. Yay. Um, but I will be doing some, some strength stuff because I've still got to do my testing as part of the uh, case study we're doing. So there will be a few heavy days thrown in, but keeping uh, cardio pretty light or minimal for starting off on a diet. Um, you want to make sure that you've got room for something at the end of your diet when you actually need to keep creating that further calorie deficit. So what we tend to see is if you started doing like three hit sessions in the first week of your diet, um, your body adapts you to adapt to that. So the same way that our body adapts to calories, um, we adapt to that training. So then now to create that same calorie burn, you've got to go even harder. So super important not to get overzealous at the beginning of your diet. Just do what you need to do and don't do any more than that. <laughs> I think, uh, do yeah, done. do what must be done. So I think that's all from us this week. Um, pretty easy. Well, I would like those high calories, but. <laughs> Guys, if you like the videos, like the videos, share the videos, subscribe to her channel, subscribe to mine if you want to, um, and buy our shit. <laughs> Have a good one, guys.